Hi, everybody. This is uh, Father John here. I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about uh, spiritual rule of life. We're coming up on Lent pretty soon. Uh, that's always a good time to start thinking about a spiritual rule of life. Uh, personally, I tend to look at mine in January because New Year's, right? And so instead of New Year's resolutions, um, I tend to look at my spiritual rule of life. So, so what is a spiritual rule of life? Well, first of all, it's not, uh, it's not a set of rules like rules of a game or something like that. Uh, the idea actually comes more from uh, the word uh, that means like ruler uh, or, or a pattern or a model or an example or something like that. Um, it, it regulates uh, your life. It directs your life. Uh, some people have used the analogy of a trellis that, you know, when you have a trellis in your garden that helps direct the growth of the plants uh, in a certain direction and in a certain way. And so a rule of life can be thought of in that same way that, that this is a way to help direct your life uh, in the way that you want to grow as a Christian. <clears throat> Basically, it's a plan uh, for keeping kind of a routine or a discipline of different spiritual practices. Um, even though I said that I do this, uh, or at least I review mine uh, at the beginning of the year, it's not the same thing as a New Year's resolution. Um, it's not the same thing really even as goals uh, that we set. Um, this, is, this is more uh, an idea of focusing on what we're going to become. New Year's resolutions or, or you know, goals, new goals, those are uh, usually tasks that are measurable uh, and, and they usually are involving things that we're going to do. And again, a, a spiritual rule of life is more focused on uh, what we want to become rather than what we want to do. Um, it establishes a rhythm up for life. Everything that we do, whether you think about it or not, has rhythms. Uh, you know, what is your typical day? You get up at a certain time, uh, you, you brush your teeth, you wash your face, you take a shower, whatever it is, you, you generally have a rhythm for how you live your life. Uh, even those of us that are kind of ADHD and spontaneous, they're still uh, overall a rhythm to what it is that we do. And so uh, a spiritual uh, rule of life just helps establish that rhythm. And in terms of some of the things that we tend to overlook, we, we still as, as people tend to, to view the secular and uh, the sacred as two separate things. And they're not. The, the, the sacred uh, is intended to permeate all parts of our life. And, and so the rule of life can help you with that. Uh, you can go way back in time. Uh, the desert fathers, the people that, that went out into the desert and lived in caves, uh, they had rules of life. Probably the most famous uh, rule is, is the rule of St. Benedict. And you can Google that, look it up, pretty involved thing. Um, basically, it, it keeps us sane and it keeps us uh, holy. I mean, that's kind of the goal, right? And, and it's not the idea that we're going to live it perfectly. Um, we're Christians. Uh, we're sinners. Um, we, we know better than to think that we're going to, to live out something perfectly. Um, but we do want it to be um, something that is doable and realistic. Uh, again, it's not an ideal that we're striving for. It's almost more of a minimum standard that I don't want to fall below. Um, so again, it, it, it's not the idea of a goal, uh, it's more the idea of a standard or uh, a, a regulation in terms of how we go and how we live our lives. It's not legalistic. Um, it's not, oh my gosh, I, I forgot to read uh, my Bible study for today. Um, it is spiritually directed. It's the whole idea behind this is, again, kind of incorporating the sacred uh, into our daily rhythms. Uh, it allows us to make time in our lives uh, and space in our lives for God. Uh, we get so busy with things that unless we start planning, uh, then, then it's easy to put aside our Bible study or our quiet time or whatever it is. Um, and like I said, it also allows us to recognize that everything that we do has to do with spirituality, that there aren't the sacred and the secular. It's, it's the sacred that permeates everything. And so even some of the things that we do routinely that we might not think of as being spiritual actually are. And we'll, we'll come to that. Um, 
And, and there are, uh, th what we're talking about is an individual rule of life. There are corporate rules of life, like the rule of St. Benedict and other monasteries and things like that have them. Um, I like this quote from Margaret Gunther. She says, a good rule can set us free to be our true and best selves. It is a working document, a kind of spiritual budget, not carved in stone, but subject to regular review and revision. It should support us, but never constrict us. And again, the idea that, that this isn't something that's legalistic. So let me talk again, just kind of some general things. When you're setting up your rule, you're going to want to look at different spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines. Um, sometimes the word discipline throws us off. Um, so maybe thinking in terms of spiritual practices as opposed to disciplines. But anyway, uh, these spiritual practices are a means of grace by which God nourishes us. Um, and so, you know, that's going to vary from person to person. But let me give you some examples. Um, rest of some kind. Uh, maybe that's daily quiet time. Maybe that's a, a retreat that you take every so often. Maybe that's making sure that you have a Sabbath day, a true Sabbath day every week. Prayer, um, using the daily office uh, is a part of that. Um, having your own prayer time, whatever it is that, that is part of that. The sacraments, um, going to uh, communion every week. Um, participating in the rite of, of confession. Um, kind of the arts, um, you, reading the Psalms, reading poetry, listening to music, um, all of that can be part of this. <clears throat> Bible study, obviously, we think of, right? Um, books, um, the Bible, yep, definitely, but but um, reading other things, reading um, books written by the early church fathers, um, Augustine or, uh, or somebody like that, reading um, books from kind of the more modern uh, Christian giants of our day, C.S. Lewis, um, and then uh, even reading books of fiction. Uh, you know, there, there can be um, some spiritual redeeming uh, grace found in that, uh, depending on what it is. Um, journaling. Uh, is another one that's very common. Um, there are some spiritual practices that are not so much internal to us or so much adding on as maybe subtracting or outside. So the spiritual practice of fasting, uh, the spiritual practice of service to others. A spiritual practice that I would strongly recommend uh, is that you have a spiritual director. So just as kind of a little side note, let's talk a little bit about that. A spiritual director is someone that helps you to hear, understand, and act on what it is that God's saying in your life. A spiritual director is not a counselor. Um, it's not um, uh, somebody who's going to tell you what to do. It's more like they allow you to hear what God is doing in your life. Um, it's like they're coming alongside of you and walking alongside of you. Um, they should be experienced. They should be humble. Um, they don't have to be clergy. Um, they can be uh, anyone who is a strong, mature Christian. Um, and then finally, um, again, as far as your rule of life goes, pretty much anything that, that, that uh, you can do uh, or, or that you are doing um, has a spiritual component to it. Um, so, um, just recognizing that those common things in life can also be part of your spiritual life. Um, there are some, some resources, um, that, uh, are, are available to you. Um, <clears throat> one is renovari, R-E-N-O-V-A-R-E.org. Uh, that's a really great uh, resource. Uh, if you type in finding your rhythm, um, you can find uh, the, the part of that. Um, trying to figure out how best I can maybe share this with you. Let me try it this way. Here we go. So you should be able to see, let me bring this out a little bit more here. Uh, these three resources down at the bottom, uh, ssje.org, csle, uh, wisinstitute.org, and then renovari.org. 
um, those resources um, would be very, uh, very good resources for you, uh, as well as maybe talking with other people that, um, that have gone this route. Uh, just uh, again, let me show you um, my rule of life. Now, again, a rule of life is, is kind of a personal thing. Um, it's, uh, you need to make it however it's gonna work for you. And when I initially sat down to look at how I wanted to do my rule of life, I wanted to think about it in terms of a lot of different areas. And so first of all, I thought of it in terms of health, just in general. So a rule of life is helping me to grow and to develop my health in a lot of different areas. And so there's uh, what I called abiding health, which is kind of my spiritual health. Um, there's community health because things that I do uh, in community uh, have a spiritual component. There's family health, uh, there's physical health, and then there's what I call creation health. And so you'll see uh, here how I kind of patterned that out. Uh, and again, this is just an example, certainly not the way that you need to do it. Um, and, um, but it may at least give you some ideas. So let me walk through this uh, really quickly with you. Um, you can see on the left um, that I've got it split up into abiding health and community health, family health, physical health, and creation health. Uh, and then on the top, I've got it divided into daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal or yearly. And so the idea again is that, that these are, um, maybe the minimums that I wanna do things. And I also did not put a lot of writing into this. So um, there's kind of, to my mind, there's ideas of how often I want to do this. Um, so uh, daily, um, uh, the idea of doing daily office or prayer, um, listening to praise music. I do that on the way into work and on the way back. Um, having some quiet time every day. So these are things that, that for my spiritual well-being, for my, for my own abiding in Christ, uh, that I strive to do daily. Um, as far as, as looking at um, how does spirituality affect my relation with the community? Well, I, I work at the hospital, right? And so there are ministry opportunities for me there um, with the people that I work with, with my patients, with their parents. Um, there are opportunities for me, uh, whether that's sharing the gospel or, uh, you know, praying with somebody or whatever it is. So, so I would like to daily at least look for ministry opportunities at work. Uh, and then following into that daily praying for, for my patients and the staff at St. Vincent's, that's the hospital I work at, praying for Holy Spirit Anglican Church, praying for billings. Um, as I look at the news, I get news updates through Facebook and, you know, whatever else, Billings Gazette, um, instead of just kind of flicking by that, uh, my, my uh, desires that maybe I'd pause and pray about those. Um, family health. So um, how does my spirituality affect my family? Well, having evening family prayer, uh, having some cuddle time with my wife, uh, having some unplug time. Uh, for uh, my wife and I to just be able to sit and talk and, and to be with one another. Physical health. Physical health is a part of spirituality. Um, I want to get a good night's sleep. I want to be watching what I eat. I want to be drinking water instead of other things. Um, as many of you know, I'm, I'm diabetic, um, so I want to take my medicine. I want to monitor my glucose. These are all things that you might think, well, what does that have to do with spirituality? Well, it has to do with taking care of God's creation, me. Um, and uh, if I'm not healthy, how can I do all these other spiritual things anyway? So, um, so my physical health is a part of my spirituality. And then finally, creation health, um, you know, daily, conserving water, conserving electricity, recycling. Um, so same thing, weekly. Um, I do the Eucharist. Um, I worship at church, doing a Bible study once a week, trying to take a Sabbath day that's a true Sabbath day, um, reading various things. So for me, just not reading scripture, prepping for Bible study or prepping for sermons, but just sitting down and reading scripture, um, reading other things, spiritual readings or, or what have you. Um, the community health, Eucharist and worship is part of the community too. It feeds me, but it also feeds the community. Discipleship, what am I doing with others? Um, making relationships and planting relationships. One of the things that, again, this is 2021, right? So I just started doing this is, is that I decided I'm going to try weekly um, to spend some time at a local coffee shop. Uh, just hang out there, make some new friends. 
uh, and see what happens with that. Um, weekly, at least having an opportunity to share the good news. Weekly, having a date night, um, exercising, monitoring my blood pressure, um, doing something I love birds. And so we've got a bird feeder outside the, the window here. Just I can look right above the computer and see it right now. So just watching the birds um, or doing something with uh, our dog, Barley, or with the horses. Monthly, I have a church planter coach meeting with him, um, doing some home worship with the guitar. And, and again, these are guidelines. This isn't a, a strict thing. I got to tell you, I haven't worshiped with the guitar in a long time. And I miss that, though. And, and this is a way for me to go back and say, wow, you know, I used to do that. I wish I still did. Tithing, uh, I do that monthly uh, as opposed to weekly or what have you. Um, fasting, um, journaling. Uh, doing uh, different service or generosity for people, uh, spiritual direction of someone else with me as the spiritual director, um, practicing hospitality. One of the things that I'm trying to implement that I haven't yet is just like uh, there's a time with uh, uh, a weekly time at the coffee shop, maybe a monthly time at the pub where uh, we can get together as a church family just for uh, informal conversation, what have you. Um, Again, family health, uh, when I do play the guitar, my wife loves to join in with uh, singing. And, and so that's a good family time. Going out into the outdoors, uh, finding outdoor time for creation health. And then finally, there's some things that I do seasonally or yearly. Every Lent, I always choose some discipline to do. Um, at least twice a year, I, I do confession. I usually try to do it uh, at Advent and I always do it at Lent. Um, there's an author, uh, uh, Evelyn Underhill, and she wrote a, a book called Concerning the Inner Life, um, which is a very convicting book to clergy and leaders in the church, or at least it is to me. Um, and so I endeavor to try to read that once a year, uh, just to remind myself that I do need to connect with God. Um, doing a personal retreat, um, doing spiritual direction quarterly, um, just celebrating the major feasts and celebrations within the church. Um, celebrating also life events, birthdays, anniversaries. Um, we sponsor some kids with compassion. So writing to them, uh, you know, periodically, um, doing a men's retreat, doing the clericus, um, vacation, anniversary. So, I mean, you get the idea. Um, and, and again, this is just the way that I do it. Uh, certainly not the way that you have to do it, um, but maybe it will give you some ideas about uh, different things that you could put uh, in your own uh, rule of life. So um, if you have uh, questions, I would love to talk with you more about it. You can always drop me an email or a message or uh, write a question on Facebook and we'll be glad to uh, uh, try to get back to you on that. Uh, I would highly encourage you to do this. God bless.